Live from the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown, this is West Virginia Tonight. This evening, a special look at Mountaineer basketball. Now, here's Dan Thorne at the WVU Coliseum. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're coming to you live from the WVU Coliseum for another sellout. The men's basketball team taking on the number two team in the country, the Kansas Jayhawks. This game has huge implications, not only for the AP rankings, but also for Big 12 Conference play. Before we get to a preview, we're going to be a look at some of the people we're going to be speaking with tonight. We're going to be speaking with the man on the radio call for the Mountaineers, Tony Caridi. We're also going to be speaking with ESPN College Basketball basketball analyst Andy Katz and WVU president E. Gordon Gee. But before we get to all of that, we're going to be getting a preview of tonight's game with West Virginia Illustrated's Jeff Coyle. Jeff, team's been skidding the past couple games. Can they bounce back tonight? They absolutely can. And the reason why I know this is because the last three times that Kansas has come to Morgantown, including last year as the number one team in the yeah. whole country, WVU has come <laughs> out with a win. So we know that this team can rise up when the stage calls for it. And that's what they've got tonight, an opportunity for number 18 West Virginia to knock off number two, Kansas. What better way to refocus after two straight losses than with the number two team in the country? Kansas has become synonymous with the phrase Big 12 champion. The Jayhawks are seeking their 13th straight regular season title, and so far they're on track to do just that. Head coach Bill Self's squad has won 18 games in a row since dropping the opener against Indiana. Some of the games in Big 12 action have been nail biters though. KU has four wins that have come by just seven or fewer points. Senior guard Frank Mason III seems like he's been at Kansas since the current run of titles began and the Mountaineers will be glad to see him graduate. He leads the entire Big 12 in scoring with more than 20 points per game, and he's tied for second in assists. Mason can drive through the lane, or he can get his points from long range. And in fact, he's the Big 12's best three-point shooter this season, connecting on 54% from beyond the arc. WVU players and coaches agree this will be the biggest test of the season, but they also seem to think that that may be precisely what the Mountaineers need. I hope everybody wakes up and sees that um, we got a tough matchup on the, at home. We just took a loss at home, so we can't really lose again at home, but should be ready for it. We're not very good on top. You know, we've, we've got you know, we to know that we have to scratch and claw, and I mean, that's kind of what, what's kind of what we are. And if we get a load of this stat, so far Kansas has played four true road games. None of them have come against ranked opponents, though. So West Virginia represents the first team that's in the top 25 that Kansas goes on the road to face. And, you know, WVU, as you heard in the sound bites, they'd rather be the hunter than right. the hunted. They get that Absolutely. opportunity tonight. All right, Jeff Coyle, thank you so much for that breakdown. Thank you, Dan. All right, we're going to be going now live to Angelica Chanone, who is standing by live with the play-by-play -play man for the Mountaineers, Tony Caridi. Angelica? Well, Dan, I am joined here now by Tony Caridi. Tony, thanks for joining us. So beating number one Baylor when they were number one at the time, a two-game skid, and now here we are at the Coliseum, number two Kansas coming to town. What do the Mountaineers have to do to refocus and get back on track tonight? Probably try to recapture whatever it was they did that night against Baylor because, as you remember, that was a game in which West Virginia led from literally the start to the final buzzer. That was a team that forced 29 turnovers against Baylor over the last couple of games. Obviously, that hasn't been happening. You know, West Virginia turned it over an amazing 23 times on Saturday at Kansas State. If you go back from the Baylor game, so Texas, Oklahoma, and then Kansas State, West Virginia has not been successfully getting enough turnovers. A third of West Virginia's offense comes off of opposing teams' mistakes. So when you don't, when you don't force those mistakes, as a result, you're not going to have those opportunities to get a third of your points. That's been the problem. So if the Mountaineers can play like the team that they were playing like a couple weeks ago, what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge for Kansas that West Virginia is going to present? Well, probably it is the press. If West Virginia can re-establish that press, you know, that press was problematic to Kansas a year ago. They had 22 turnovers in the game. Frank Mason, who's a legitimate national player of the year candidate, had seven turnovers here. Could that happen again? West Virginia needs to get them into an uncomfortable state. They average about 13 and a half, almost 14 turnovers 
turnovers in league play. They probably need to be at about 20. West Virginia needs to have them at about 20. And West Virginia needs probably to be about at 9 or 10 in this game in order to be there. Another stat from last year, which was amazing, West Virginia scored 20 more points at the free throw line than Kansas. That was a huge part of the game. And two, so turnovers and free throws. That's going to be a key here tonight if the Mountaineers can uh, make those free throws and be the ones forcing the turnovers as well. I think so, and I think you try to get to their bench. You know, they're unbelievably good, but they really only go about eight players. So can your 11 or 12 force them to get into their ninth and 10th person where they're not as comfortable? All right, Tony, thank you so much for joining us now. For more on this West Virginia-Kansas matchup, we'll send it back to Dan. All right, Angelica, thanks a lot. We're going to go now to Drew Goldfarb, who's standing by live in Charleston, to get a bigger picture about the Big 12. Drew? Dan, thanks. The marquee matchup in the conference tonight is definitely the Mountaineers and the Jayhawks. The Jayhawks are the only team left unbeaten in conference play this year. That has them at number one in the conference. The number two team in the Big 12 is Baylor, a team that WVU defeated just two weeks ago. The Bears are off today, but are back at it tomorrow against Texas Tech. A win tonight for WVU would help get them closer to the top of the conference. Kansas State and Iowa State are both tied with the Mountaineers in the conference standings right now. Those two teams will square off against each other tonight at 9 p.m. in Ames. Texas Tech is currently one spot back of the Wildcats, Cyclones and Mountaineers. And TCU is a half game back of the Red Raiders, not pictured there. They're in sixth in the conference. Plenty of time left this season, but the top of the conference is up for grabs and the Mountaineers can help add to the parity of the Big 12 if they can pick up the win tonight over the Jayhawks. For now, Dan, let's send it back out to you in Morgantown. All right, Drew, thanks a lot. We'll be coming back live from Morgantown. This is West Virginia tonight at the WVU Coliseum for the men's basketball game against the Kansas Jayhawks. We'll be back after the break. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to West Virginia tonight. We're coming to you live from the WVU Coliseum. The men's basketball team playing against the number two team in the country, the Kansas Jayhawks. The fans already starting to fill in here, and we have with us tonight none other than the president of the university, President Gordon Gee. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh, delighted to be here. The kids are here. I'm here. I've got my pepperoni rolls ready yeah, to hand out. <laughs> I, I mean, I think the fans are really excited about that. But first, let's touch on the uh, athletic programs here at WVU. You have the women's program. You have the men's program. For basketball both nationally ranked the football team does well this year you have the women's uh, soccer team go to the national championship and you win a United States gold medal with a air rifle shooter from WVU what does that say other than this these players and these teams are really good what does that say about the student athletes? Well, it really says that we have great student athletes and we also have one of the better APRs which means that the academic performance of our student athletes is very very high so you know so they're great students everyone says you can't have a student athlete anymore I believe that we're proving that to be not true. Let me tell you, President Gee, it seems like the cranes are always on here at WVU. There's always something being renovated, being built. I understand there's a new announcement for a new community track center and aquatic center. Can you touch on that? Yeah, we, we are getting ready to announce that. We uh, obviously have built a great, uh, a great baseball stadium with our community. Now we want to build a great community uh, aquatic center, which will be, uh, which will be also Olympic size. It'll be a fabulous place for our students to swim and dive. I'm telling you, the atmosphere here tonight, it's feeling good. Is it all because of you? Well, no. In fact, it's, it's, it's despite me, as a matter of fact. I don't want to be a damper on anyone, but it's great to have you here. And I tell you something, um, uh, it's great to be playing in the Big 12. As you know, uh, it's a brutal season. We've had a couple of very close games. We're still the number seven ranked team in the country, so nothing wrong with that, right? So you really like being in the Big 12? Oh, I love being in the Big 12. 